Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Today is going to be a little different as usual. I have already put out one tutorial on how to use mods in Subnautica some time ago, I think it's been about two years. And while most of the things have remained the same, I consistently get a lot of questions on that video and some things have indeed changed since then. So I decided to quickly make a new version of this updated for 2022 to show you all exactly how to get mods for Subnautica on PC. So let's jump right into it. To start us off, here I am on my desktop. And the first thing we need to talk about is where to even get mods from. Just as when we did last time, my recommendation would be the Nexus Mods website. Not only does this website support tons of games, I mean look at that number, but their reporting and checking systems are very good and I actually have yet to download any malicious files from here and I've been using this website for years and years, so highly recommend. Yes, you can find Subnautica mods in other places, but this is simply the most consistent and most well-supported place. If you go to the nexus.com slash Subnautica site, you will be probably treated to something like this, and this is where you are able to find all of the mods. I can either browse by top files, special categories, or I can look at what are the most popular mods of all time on the website. Here you can always see the mod with a proper description, who made it, and some details, such as how large it is, how many upvotes it has, and how many people have downloaded it. Now, before we go any further, you will need an account on this website to effectively use it. Yes, technically you can do stuff without an account, but I highly recommend one for what's to come next. Now, I already have an account, so I'm able to just log in, but if you don't have one, you will have to click on the register button and go through the registration flow. Now, there are technically two different ways to download mods from the Nexus website. I just picked the map mod because it allows for easy demonstration. Now the download options that we have presented here are the Vortex tool and manual download. In this video I will explain both, but why don't we start with Vortex because it is the cleaner and in my opinion also nicer way to download mods. Now the Vortex tool is actually an amazing helping tool for modding games, not just from the Nexus Mods website even though they have a wonderful integration, but from other sources as well. If you've been around modding for quite some time you might recognize it as the Nexus Mod Manager because that's how it used to be known in the past. For now, I'm just going to download the latest version. When you click to download the latest version, you will be prompted with two different files, either the one which lets you set a custom install location or the one that doesn't. I'm gonna pick the one for the custom install location because I prefer to keep my disks clean. Now don't be confused here, there is the premium option here, but you do not need it to download any files, and in fact, downloading all files from the Nexus can be done for free. So I'm just going to click slow download. I'm going to save the file to wherever, in this case the downloads folder, and now we just have to wait for it to download. Alright, once downloaded, we can see the file here, I'm going to double click, and now is the time where I can set my custom install location. Again, if you pick the one which doesn't let you do this, you don't have to worry about this step. Once you've selected your location, you can just click install. And once the install wizard is finished, you can simply click run. At the start, Vortex will ask you if you should let it collect some data, the choice to do this or deny doing this is completely up to you. Now when the tool finally opens, it might look a little overwhelming, but don't worry, we'll get through it. Yours might also look a little different, mine does remember that I use Subnautica and Below Zero, but yours might not show this. In case it doesn't, that's totally fine, don't worry about it. The first place to start is to log in with your Nexus account right up here. You'll have to log in and authorize, and by the time you're in, you will see your profile and you'll be able to start modding games. The first place to go is in the left menu, click on games, and as you can see you're not really managing any games right now, but of course we want Subnautica. So in the bottom right you can click scan for games, which will automatically scan for any games that you have installed in your computer which do fit into, well, this long list. This will ask you to specify a path, for me it automatically detects Steam, but you might need to choose a different disk if you have your games installed somewhere else. You press scan and wait for it to do its business. For me, it found two games, I'm gonna guess those are Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero. Yep, right there. But of course, it might happen that it will not find the game. What to do then? If a game hasn't been found, you can still click on Manage, and it will give you this pop-up that the game hasn't been discovered and you have to set the game folder manually. If this is the case, you will have to navigate into your Steam folder. It will be the first Subnautica folder under Steam. So in most cases, the path will look something like this. After locating the folder, you will have to select the specific folder which contains Subnautica from the list of all of your Steam games, and then click Select Folder in the bottom right corner. Now, if you're running the game off of the Epic Games Launcher, or if you're running it off of the Microsoft Store, I will get to both of those at the end of the video. Either way, you should be able to click Manage, and after a little bit, Subnautica will appear in your managed games. Now, of course, we get a nice handy pop-up here, 
saying the QMod Manager is not installed. So why don't we click on Get QMod Manager. Now the QMod Manager is something exclusive to Subnautica that you will need, and it's essentially just a framework for loading mods. It's something you can't really use mods without, so why don't we get it? On the right side you can see the Vortex button under Download. If this button doesn't show up, make sure you're actually logged in. Now that we have the Vortex tool, we can click it. This will again prompt us with the download page, there is no need to go premium, you can just pick slow download. And then you will get a prompt such as this to open Vortex or it might happen automatically. You can click open Vortex. And now nothing happens but if you select Vortex, if you were to click on download, I'm a little slow, you would see that the download is finished and in fact, we even have that information here in the notifications. The download has been finished for QMod Manager 4.3.0. Now, of course, we can now click on the install button here, but if you wanted to view it, you can also go into the mods, and it would now show up here as the QMod Manager as never installed. Now, of course, we need it to be installed to be able to run other mods, so you're going to click on the down arrow and click enabled. After a little bit of installing, it should be finished, and it will prompt you saying deployment requires elevation right here. Now in order to do this, you're just going to click on the Elevate button, and there you go. All notifications should be cleared, the mod should be enabled, and we should be good to go. Now as you can see, if Subnautica is being properly managed, it should show up in the top left corner as it does now, and there's actually a very quick way to test whether this worked. You simply click on this arrow, which will open the game, and you can navigate into the options, and there should now be a separate tab for mods. If it's not there, something must have gone wrong and I will talk about the troubleshooting towards the end of the video. Now that we have the QMod Manager installed, just a couple more things about the Vortex tool. On the left side you can navigate to the settings page, where you can select things such as where do you want your mods to download, at what speed if you want to limit the bandwidth, or whether you want it to handle Nexus mod downloads or not. Of course you can also go premium if you would want unlimited download speeds, but I've never really done this myself. And for the rest of it I will let you explore the settings, why don't we just go get some mods. So returning to our map mod from earlier, everything is ready, the Vortex tool is open and we are logged in both on the website and on the tool. Now to download the mod, we have to click on the Vortex button. However, as you can see we're prompted with additional files required. Certain mods will require additional files to be able to properly function on your PC. As you can see the map mod only requires QMod Manager, which we just installed, so there is no problem downloading it. We can click on slow download. This is also where you can donate to the author if you really enjoy their work. And if we open the Vortex tool and look into mods, you can now see that the map-subnautica mod has been downloaded. Now to install it, you simply click on the down arrow and click enable. Once again, you will be prompted that deployment requires elevation. You can click on the elevate button and everything should be good to go. We can again launch the game to check if everything is working. Now I also picked the Moonpool vehicle repair to demonstrate something, because here if we click the download, you can see that suddenly there are actually more mods required to make it work. In this section you can sometimes occasionally see mods that the author recommends you use, but aren't strictly required. In this case, SML Helper is also required to get this to work, so why don't we click on it and get it first. The same way as with the map mod, we can click on the Vortex button, and yet again we're prompted with additional files required, this time the version checker mod. As you can see, this can become quite the rabbit hole. Either way, once you have downloaded all of those, you would be able to get Moonpool Vehicle Repair, and presumably it would work just fine. Now when looking at the actual mod page, this will not only list things that the mod requires, but also other mods that require this mod to properly function. And oftentimes, especially with these larger, more popular mods, you're also going to see installation instructions. Now these instructions are for manual installation, which Let's talk about that. Now I very strongly recommend the Vortex tool for managing your mods. Not only does it keep the installation folders clean, but it also allows you to remove them super easily, with the click of one button. If you wanted to install a file strictly manually, you could, just as the instructions on this one say, simply download the archive and extract it into your Subnautica folder. However, this is very messy and will make removing the mod later in the future quite difficult, unless your naming is on point. But what about something like the resource monitor? I mean, it only requires the SML helper and the QMod manager, so not very difficult to get, but where is the vortex button? Now some mods simply won't have this, and the manual button will be the only one made available to you, but worry not, we can still use vortex. First you're going to click on the manual download, you're going to be prompted about what the mod needs, and you're going to click download. Of course, as per usual, we're going to click on slow, but now as opposed to Vortex, you will simply be asked where you want to save this file. I recommend somewhere in your games folder or on the drive where you have your games, and click save. 
this will download a .rar file which is by itself compressed and if you use something like WinRAR or 7-zip you would be able to unpack it but we don't really have to right now. Instead, this is when you're going to go into Vortex and you're going to navigate to up here and you'll click install from file. This will open the explorer and here you can navigate to where you downloaded the mod, select it and click open. Vortex will now do all the fun stuff for you and boom, there it is. You can click on the down arrow and enable the mod. Now, that is effectively it for how you install mods for Subnautica. So now let's do a bit of a frequently asked questions segment where I will try to answer some of the most common comments I got on the original tutorial video. Can mods be used on consoles? As of right now, without tampering with the original operating system of the console, I don't know of any way to use Nexus mods with the Vortex tool on Xbox, PlayStation or the Switch. So. Unfortunately, no. Does this work if I run the game from the Epic Games Store or the Microsoft Store? It does indeed. However, for both of these tools, finding the install folder will be a little different than for Steam. For the Epic Games Store, this will be a little simpler. You will simply have to navigate to either the default install path, which kind of looks like this, or wherever you set your custom path. That's where you'll be able to find the games.exe file, but then when you click set the game folder manually, you will simply have to navigate to that folder. Now for the Microsoft Store, this will be a little bit trickier, since you will have to navigate through a few hoops to actually make the folder visible in your explorer. Luckily googling where does Microsoft Store save games or finding out how to view the install folder will usually yield a reliable answer. Finally, for a little bit of bug testing, what do you do if you go through all of the steps, you open Subnautica and it just doesn't seem like the mod tab is there, it doesn't seem like anything happened and it doesn't seem like it's working? Well, there are several things you really need to check first. Now sometimes, even though Subnautica might appear managed, Vortex might actually have the incorrect path to it, so click on this little plus icon to view details and make sure that the path to the game is actually correct. Additionally, though it has yet to happen to me, it is possible that QMod Manager might have simply encountered an error while installing, so removing it and then reinstalling it can often solve the issue. Finally, and this has happened to me on several occasions with people that messaged me, if you have an unofficial version of Subnautica, i.e. downloaded and cracked, there is no guarantee that this will work even if you take all of the steps correctly. If that is your case and you're running into trouble, I'm sorry but there isn't really much you can do besides just getting the official version of the game. Anyways, that is it for this video so I hope you guys found it helpful and we'll have a lot of fun breaking your Subnautica by adding a copious amount of mods. As always remember that mods are something the developers did not intend to be in the game. So if something seemingly doesn't work or it makes your game crash, well that's kind of a part of the fun so you always have to find ways to figure out which mods might be conflicting and which ones might just not work at all. Yes, that happens too. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. Please let me know down in the comments which mod configurations you're going to be running, I'm genuinely curious. And with that, I'm going to wish you all a beautiful rest of today, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.